Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Blackmagic Fusion. And this is the second part of the Sign Visualizer tutorial. And in this part, we're going to be looking at styling the scene. So let's make a start. So this is more or less where we left things last time around. Uh, so let's start building some of the rest of the scene. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new 3D merge. And then into that, I'm going to add a 3D shape. So this is going to be a plane. Let's come over to the transform. Actually, let's just look at that merge. So otherwise you won't be able to see what I'm doing. So let's first of all, open up the pivot and set that Y pivot to negative 0.5 and then the Y translation to 0.5, actually 0.49 in fact. And then let's rotate it through 90 degrees on X, open up the scale and let's have 1.2 for the X and eight for the Y. And then let's duplicate that. So Command C, Command V, pipe it into that same merge and let's come over again to its transform. This time let's have an X of 0.1, a Y of 0.4 and a Z rotation of negative 90. And all we need to do is move the X pivot to 0.5. And now we've got the, the vertical wall. So then I'm just going to add a quick blin to this and pipe it into both of those two shapes. Let's set the opacity down to 0.5 and reduce the red down to zero and the green to 0.9. Let's get a little bit of blueness in there. So I think what I might do is also just move that second shape up a little bit, just do it manually by eye. So it's sort of sitting like that. So then I also want to add some 3D text. So add 3D text tool, pipe it into that same merge. I'm going to type the word sign. So let's come over to the transform tab. Notice there's sort of lots of different ways in which you can transform the text. But in this case, we need to come to the transform tab, not to either of these other two. So that transform there, I should say. Let's have an X value of one and a Z value of negative one. And let's rotate it through negative 90 on Y. Uh, let's come back to text. Let's set the H anchor, which is the horizontal anchor to left justify like this. Uh, it looks like my transform is wrong. Let's increase that size to something like 1.9. And let's manually move it over. Don't know what went wrong with my numbers there. Sort of sitting something like that. Don't know what went wrong there. Doesn't really matter. You get the idea. So then let's copy that text. Command C, Command V, and let's pipe it into the merge like that. Then we're going to type cosine for this. So come back over to the transform here. Negative 0.55 for X, uh, zero for Y, and 0.5 for Z. And then in the rotation, we want negative 90 on X. And again, my numbers look a little bit off. So I'm just going to move that manually down the Z plane till it's sort of sitting something like that. So a lot of this is more easily done by eye than necessarily by the numbers. And I think I might just move that down. You'll see that actually I, what I want to do is I want to drop it underneath the plane. So it's just uh, taking on some of that color. So then the other thing I want to add to this group is another plane. So 3D shape, pipe it into that same merge there. I'm going to call this one backdrop. What I want to do is come to its transform. Let's first of all scale it up to 75. I want to move it back negative four on Z. And let's just come over to its material. Let's set the red value to 0 0.03, green value also to 0 0.03, and the blue value to 0 0.08. So it's going to be pretty dark at the moment, but once we've added these lights, it's going to give us enough interest in the background. So then I'm going to group everything that I've just made. So Command G, and then let's add it into a new merge that after this main merge here. So 
3D merge there, add in this group here. And I'll just rename that group as scene. So next what I want to do is add yet another 3D merge after this one. So 3D merge there. And to this, I'm going to add the 3D camera. So make sure we're at the first frame and let's come over to the transform. So translation is going to be negative 1.25 on X, 0.35 on Y and 4.5 on Z. And the Y rotation is going to be negative 25. So now let's just add a 3D renderer after that so we can see the output of this. And I think I've got my numbers right this time. You'll see that actually my text is all completely wrong. So let's come back into that scene. It's this first piece of text here. We want to just move it up on Y and just move it back on Z. Don't know what happened there. End of a long week. Probably my original numbers were right. Who knows? Anyway, that's that's where we want it. Oh, so let's come back to our camera. And what we're going to do is we're going to animate it, obviously. So let's right click on the translation, animate translate group and do the same thing for the rotation, animate rotate group. And let's come to our last frame. But actually, let's turn off the particles. So that's command P on the particles because otherwise the particles will try to update and, and, and it'll get very sticky. So let's just come to the last frame. And what I want to do here is have a Z value of 9.5. And then we just need to rotate that Y to negative 20. And then that's going to keep everything sort of in the frame pretty much throughout the duration. So next, let's uh, think about adding some lights. So I'm going to make a little bit of space before the 3D renderer and add yet another 3D merge. It's a really good idea to kind of keep your merges separate because as you'll see later on, we can do different things with different renderers out of different merges and it just keeps the scene a lot tidier. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an ambient light and I'm going to set its intensity to 0.15. And then let's make sure our renderer is showing the lighting. So now that's quite dark, but once we've added in our extra lights, it's going to be fine. So I'm going to add a three point light again to this merge here. And you can see already how nicely that's illuminating the background. Let's first of all set up its color. So I want 0.9 for the red, and then I'm going to switch it to linear, and then the decay rate I'm going to set to 0.75. And then we need to come over to the transform. For the X, we're going to have a negative 0.2. For the Y, 0.35. And for the Z, let's have negative 2. So next I want to add in the animated lights, which are really going to give this scene some colour. So I think I might do this by adding yet another 3D merge after this one. No harm in that. Let's add to it a new three point light. So let's set up its colour. One for red, 0.8 for green and 0.6 for blue. Let's set its intensity to 0.2 and its decay type to linear. And then what we want to do is we want to link it to the driver. So bring up our old friend, the driver, back into play like that. Let's open up the point light. So come to the transform. So what we will need to do is we need to link the X position because it's going, it's following the cosine movement. So right click on the X, add an expression and pick whip the X value. For the Y value, I'm going to have 0.1. So it's sitting a little bit above the floor. And again, let's add an expression to the Z and we can pick whip the Z value of the driver. So now you can see how that light is now matching that, that ball there. And we need to do the same thing for the other light, for the, for the sign light. So we can do that by copying this point light, command C, command V, and also pipe it into that same merge there. Trying to keep things as tidy as I can, but uh, it's not always easy during a tutorial. So this second light, what we're going to be doing is changing it to that uh, sign color. So that's 0.25 for red, 0.3 for green, and 0.4 for blue and then we need to come back to its transform we don't actually need to use the driver again we can just copy this x value command c add an expression to the y and paste it in there remembering to, to change that x to a y and we need to add 0.5 to this value so plus 0.5 let's remove the x expression and set that value to 0.5 and now you can see how that's uh, illuminating the wall like this. And those two lights together 
are kind of creating a really nice effect. So we've done most of the work now, but what, what we're going to do now is to refine this by taking the outputs of different merges into different renderers. So the first thing I think I want to do is I want to create a new merge. In fact, I'm just going to disconnect that those balls from this merge here, because that's going to be good. And I disconnect those particles. And we can use this merge that's got the face and hands and bars. Let's move it out of the way a bit like that. And after this merge, we're going to add a replace material. So replace material. And then we're going to add a blin, pipe that into the replace material. So what this has done is, is rather handily, we can assign a material to all of these things just after the, the merge where we've, we've merged them all that. So that's the things that we're going to be set assigning a material to. Just going to give some color to this by just reducing the green down to 0.95. And let's also reduce their opacity down to 0.5. So then after the replace material, I'm going to add yet another 3D merge. And to that, I'm going to add the balls that we've disconnected because the balls are going to have their own uh, material or rather they're just going to have their default material. In fact, actually, what I want to do is while I'm here, just come into the balls. Remember, there was just that one ball called center ball. And all I'm going to do is come over to its material and reduce its opacity down to 0.75. So the reason I want this merge here is that I want to actually be able to output that into a different renderer. So we need to find our camera. So our camera is here and we need to add it to that merge. So like that. And then we need a new 3D renderer coming out of that merge. Here it is. I'm just going to move it all the way over to the end here where our other 3D renderer is. And I'm going to merge it over the top. And let's look at the output. You see how much better that already looks. So with this merge, I actually want to set the alpha gain down to zero. And you can see the effect of that is that it, it really kind of pushes everything through much more strongly. So after this renderer, this new renderer, I'm going to add a blur. And I'm also going to add a brightness contrast. So let's come back to the blur. I want to set the amount to four and reduce the blend amount to 0.5. And then come over to the brightness contrast, increase the gain to 1.6 and the gamma to 1.4. And you can see how we've now got these nice sort of glowing effects on, on these. It's really made a, a major difference. So. Before it kind of just looked like that, which was really drab. And now we've got this really nice glow effect. We're not actually adding a glow, we're just making our own using a blur and a brightness contrast. So I've done a bit of tidying up by renaming these merges and grouping the lights that go into them. It always helps to kind of just keep some, some label labeling going on. And I think what we can do here is we can take everything like that so that's the, the balls, face and hand, balls, bars, all that stuff. Group it and we can call this mechanic. It's a little bit tidier. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my particles and I want to add a new 3D merge after these particles because we definitely want to treat the particles separately. So what we need to do is make sure to pipe the camera into it turn the particles back on again. It's probably safe enough to do this. Make sure we're at the start though. And then after this merge, add a 3D renderer. And we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did with the other renderer. So actually I'm going to copy the blur and the brightness and contrast, paste them in here, and then pipe the output of that renderer into there. And then we can pipe the output of that brightness contrast over our final 2D merge there. Let's look at the result. And again, let's turn down the alpha gain to zero. So I'm just going to render a little bit of this so we can start to see some particles. So now that I can see some particles, I can set this up. We want a slightly smaller blur for this, I think. So let's go for three and let's come to the brightness and contrast. In this case, let's really crank up the gain. Let's go for four. And uh, let's have a gamma of two and let's even add in some saturation. So let's go for saturation of two. And that's really helped. So if I turn off the blur and brightness contrast, you can see they're pretty drab and flat looking. And that's given them this really nice glow. 
So that's all there really is to it. I think what I would do is definitely add in some grain as a final element. So just add in some grain at the end of everything. Uh, obviously the default is much too much. Let's kind of zoom in and see much too much. But if we reduce the power down to something like one, we'll just get this nice sort of subtle grain that ties everything together. So there you go. I hope that's been a useful overview. Obviously, I made a bit of a mess of some of the numbers, but you get the overall idea, hopefully. So thanks very much indeed for watching and see you again another time.